G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. Before we begin today's video, I would just like to thank everyone who has purchased something through the affiliate link and has gotten my in-game decal. Uh, the commissions that I get from it, I, I take a small cut from those, and it really has made the difference. So thank you so much to everyone who has purchased something. And of course, if you would like to buy something, the link is in the description. You get a 3% discount, and uh, this link might actually come in handy if you are looking to pick up some uh, cheap premium time, cheap golden eagles, whatever might be on discount with the upcoming War Thunder sales in November. So with that out of the way, I would like to discuss this particular plane you can see on screen, and yep, it is yet another phantom. We have another phantom in uh, a video. It looks like I've been covering a whole heap of them lately, and the F4C is no, uh, no different, if you will. The F4C recently received a down tier from 10.3 down to 10.0, and this means that it is going to now face 9.0s, which is uh, not a great thing, to be honest. In this particular match, I am, I believe, in a 9.3 through to 10.3 match, and honestly, I really feel like this is a little bit unfair. For the F4C, it was getting clubbed at the 10.3 the battle rating, and was often seeing those 11.0 matchmakers. Now, the F4C is one of those planes that definitely struggles in an up tier, and of course, struggling in an up tier is not something that is alien to War Thunder. Of course, you have every time you get fully up tiered a fair challenge and the F4C is no different. In this case it only has AIM-9Es, AIM-7Ds which whilst they are very very good you need to use them at high altitude with the radar that is equipped on the F4C and you don't have any flares. And to top it all off you are heavier than the F4E and slower I believe than the F4E. So you are very heavily restricted in the way that you can play this plane. At 10.0, it is a very highly clubbing machine. This plane definitely sees a lot of easier targets at 10.0, and uh, the first one here is going to be this A5. Now, A5s are the cancer of the world and deserve to burn in hell, so I have no regrets for this plane, but uh, the A5 is equipped with RWR, Magics, and uh, AIM-9Ps if you want to, but uh, this particular A5C doesn't seem to be paying a whole lot of attention, and at this type of altitude, missiles are particularly deadly, simply because the enemy does not have the ability to just simply turn like you would at low altitudes. Your turn rates are a lot more, uh, a lot more hard, and of course, missiles are a lot faster due to the uh, lack of oxygen. Of course, these are not uh, powered by air-breathing engines, they are rocket engines, and so the higher you go up, the more deadly missiles are. And of course, the F4C is no uh, stranger to that. The F4C is actually a lot better at these 6,000, 7,000 meter altitudes than a lot of its competition. Now, speaking of competition, in the distance there, you can see a MiG-17, and you might be thinking, oh, it's just like Vietnam. And uh, if you look at the kill counts in Vietnam, you'll see that the uh, MiG-17s were not not very very strong. They, they didn't do very well and uh, there's a very good reason for that and that's because they were completely outclassed by things like the F4C. Now of course this guy manages to escape my AIM-7D whether by luck or by skill and uh, it seems in this case that uh, MiG-17 versus F4C is not a fair matchup. And not only that but recently the J-29F was also put in a down tier against things like the F4C. J-29F barely does a thousand kilometers per hour. It does like 1050 at tops and it only gets two AIM-9Bs. Is very very much useless if it doesn't uh, play on the offensive and is unable to play on set offensive because planes like the F4C are forcing it down at lower altitudes. So in this case here the J-29F struggles a lot more in my opinion than the F4C would in a full up tier. So what is the balance here? Well it's not really that great to be honest. Now this MiG-21 F-13 decides to waste his life away against me and so I get the kill. I believe the MiG-21 F and the F-4C are very very similar planes, albeit the MiG-21 F is a lot harder to use. The F-4C has a Vulcan cannon and also comes with plenty of missiles, whereas the F-13 comes with a fair amount of performance and less so on the guns and missiles side. Now the MiG-19 is somewhat of a side grade in this uh, area and the MiG-19 is actually one of the planes that you are going to find as your mortal enemy. They are pretty much everything but faster than you and so you have to keep your speed and you have to work as a team. 
that means that the F4C actually has some real competition in this area, which isn't an entirely bad thing, but the fact that it faces things like the MiG-17 and the J-29F are travesties to say the least. In this case here, we have a fairly strong hold on the opposing team, and as a result, I am able to engage this MiG-19 with a fair amount of liberty. I have no use of missiles, but I do have my guns, and of course the Vulcan Cannon is more than enough in this sort of battle rating. Now, I do decide to go into the vertical because I notice that the MiG-19 is not paying 100% attention to me, and so prepare an AIM-9E. The AIM-9E does not have the range beyond 2.5 kilometers in a chase, and so I won't bother. The F-4E would have easily outdone that, and so the MiG-19 does not see those particular fights. However, the F-4C does, and the F-4C is more than capable of taking on the MiG-19. Now. Would I say that that makes up for the down tier? I would think not. And personally, the MiG-19, in my opinion, is very, very close, but inferior to the F-4C. The F-4C has a lot better of missile type capabilities, and missile type, type capabilities are a lot more favorable in these types of matchmakers. You will come up against things like the Mirages, you will come up against things like the Crusaders, and these types of fights are going to be heavily missile dependent, and the MiG-19 does suffer a little bit in those respects. However, the F-4C is more and more than capable of dealing with these types of things. So, we are going to move on again to the next match, and it is a fair bit of a down tier. I did try my hardest to get some footage in an up tier, but unfortunately this plane does get clubbed way too much in a full up tier. I never got any footage, and I think I played about 40 or 50 games, I feel like, in this thing. I definitely played it for at least uh, two days, so... Yeah, I spent a lot of time playing the F4C, uh, and I did, uh, I did mold a little bit when I got fully up tiered. Things like the uh, F4F, as in the German Phantom, did club the crap out of this thing simply because it is almost better in every single way and is only a sliver of a BR higher. Now, in my opinion, the F4F early should be at battle rating 11, uh, 10.7 simply because it has that, uh, that armament capability as well as being an excellent dogfighter. I think having uh, no flares is a little bit of a downside and therefore warrants it to be at that battle rating but uh, I digress we're going to move on to this match here against the MiG-21s here now this MiG-21 is not paying attention and I have to fear that it is a MiG-21F uh, sorry a MiG-21MF or a MiG-21 SMT but it's a PFM and so my woes are a little bit quashed but at the same time I still have to be careful there are plenty of MiG-21s around and a lot of these could be potentially deadly so I do have to be extremely careful of who I uh, decide to engage. Now the MiG-21 PFM decides to go underneath me, I go for a long burt and set the guy on fire because he basically throws his plane away and this seems to be why the MiG-21 PFM has some poor statistics, it just seems to be flown by uh, fairly inexperienced pilots. That's not to say that the MiG-21 pilots are bad, it is just to say that they require a little bit more uh, experience and a little bit more know-how in this area, which is fairly easy to come by. You just play the plane a lot. And maybe you watch some videos on YouTube, uh, of which I have a couple on the PFM. So if you want to check them out, feel free. Uh, just as I'm feeling free to dodge this particular missile, very, very easy dodge with the R3S. The R3S is a pretty poor performing missile. And of course, the PFM crashes, giving me my first kill here. So the F4 Phantom in an up tier is god awful. It is terrible. It is not fun. And uh, in some cases, you might, ask, you might think when looking top down, that the down tier was quite warranted. And if you are looking top down, you would be correct because at a full up tier, the F4C is pretty garbage and does struggle quite a lot. The issue is when you start to look bottom up, meaning you are looking at the battle ratings from 9.0 up to 10.0, and the results are quite alarming. The F4C outperforms a lot of these jets in many ways, with the exception of about turn rate, and that's about it. So for me, that is a very, very large performance margin. And having a plane like this, with such advanced missiles, killing people that have no RWR, no flares, basic missiles, can't catch it, and can only turn with it when the F4C makes a critical mistake, is quite frustrating. And to me, that makes for a really poor matchmaker. If this plane was to be at 10.3, of course it would suffer, and I think that is the better option of it completely destroying other battle ratings. For me, 
Having one plane that is bad and that is just kind of sitting there being useless is a lot better than having a plane that ruins a whole matchmaker for other planes. So if I were to say put this thing down to 8.7 uh, to 9.7, it would face 8.7s and it would ruin the whole matchmaker there simply because all of those planes that are climbing have no way of dealing with a phantom. And of course, that's why it's at 10.0. So having it at 10.0 is still not quite good enough. These planes also lack things like ra radar warning receivers. They also lack the ability to catch this plane in a straight line. They lack the ability to do everything except turn with it and avoid being seen by it, which is a kind of kind of shit precedent, to be honest. Now, the F4C does require a team. It requires a functional group of people. And of course, on the internet, you don't really get that. But I think that's the double-edged sword. You have so much offensive capability that this plane warrants a battle rating increase to 10.3. However, the defensive capabilities are subpar. And when you go up in battle rating, your offensive qualities start to be outweighed by things like R60s, radar missiles, and of course, the dreaded pulse Doppler moments. So what is the solution here? Well, there's one key solution here that you can think of uh, straight off the bat, and that is battle rating decompression. And I know I harp on about battle rating decompression a lot, and that's because it's quite important to the War Thunder ecosystem. Of course, you don't want to decompress all the way because at that point, or at some point, you will find that your decompression is so much that you don't have the space to accommodate for a queue time shorter than two minutes. And so you'll end up with people waiting a long time for a very well-balanced game, but they'll be waiting so long that they just get bored and leave for another game. And you can't really do that as a game designer. The other alternative is to perhaps increase the efficacy of this plane's armament and throw it back at a higher battle rating. And that would mean perhaps uh, the next step up in missile for this plane. For me, I think that that is the AIM-9G, and I'm not sure if this thing carried the AIM-9G, I could be wrong. Uh, I understand that it did carry the AIM-9E, uh, but I could be wrong there. I could be entirely wrong. And of course, me being a uh, game, gamer as such, and not so much a uh, history buff, I don't really know a lot about this plane. So enlighten me in the comments section below. Definitely let me know if this thing did carry 9Gs and 7Es, and also let me know if it carried flares, because if it did carry flares, I would like to see some sort of flare or ECM pod that could be equipped to this plane, maybe even in exchange for a gun pod. At the moment, the way this plane stands, it can't out-dogfight its opponents, it can't really outrun them, it can't out-missile them, and of course, it can't really outgun them, because it does sort of take the same effort to get your guns on target, and of course, if you're firing uh, guns from a missile bus, you have to steer the target to your opponent. Uh, but in a full down tier, it's the complete opposite, where it's a complete club fest for the Phantom. And so, you're in this sort of BR compression depression, if you will. And it's very, very frustrating. And it is very, very sad to witness because this is a perfectly capable plane in certain circumstances. It just needs to see those matchmakers. If it was matchmade against the MiG-19, the Su-7, the Lightning, more often, instead of those full down tier club bests, I see this plane being perfectly viable. And in a full up tier seeing no more than the MiG-21 MF, MiG-21 SMT, Mirage 3, I think this plane is perfectly viable. If, if it had flares, then it could see all the way to the German Phantoms, uh, even all the way to things like the F4E, uh, and even maybe the Draken and the Vig and the Vigan. Uh, of course, the Draken being 10.7. Uh, now, this particular circumstance, I think, would be ideal. I think that is a really good matchup for this plane because it has that equal opportunity there to sort of not quite club, but certainly you have to use your plane quite conservatively. In a, uh, in a full down tier. You can't just turn fight everyone, and in the full down tiers, you're not quite turn fighting everyone, but you are able to engage a little bit more freely since you have the ability. Maybe you've got flares. Uh, for me, that would be an ideal scenario, but unfortunately, the way we've got the game right now, it doesn't really accommodate for that type of stuff because the matchmaker is simply too compressed, and the developers haven't given this plane any better weaponry. And so these are the two solutions that I see as the most viable. And for those who uh, might know a little bit more, of course, you're more than welcome to enlighten me in the comments. So with the Phantom here, this is probably your ideal team player at a 10.0 battle rating. 
If you are going to use it in a full up tier, try and stay on the periphery. Don't get yourself involved in too many fights because at the end of the day, you are a missile bus. You have to go for the targets that are low and slow. And the targets that are high up, you are going to be struggling with a little bit against using your uh, radar missiles. It's not going to be an easy way out, of course, because the enemy has uh, RWR, they've got all the bells and whistles, and they've got flares and chaff. And uh, your missiles are very, very susceptible, or your radar, rather, is very susceptible to that sort of stuff. So... Moving in against this Hunter FGA-9, this type of dogfight is kind of interesting because in the F4E, you would very, very easily outperform this. But in the F4C, you actually have to be a little bit conservative. And so I find the Hunter FGA-9 to be a fairly even matchup against this particular plane. Perhaps not in a full up tier, perhaps not same battle rating, but certainly in a similar battle rating range where the Hunter is placed significantly lower than the F4C, I see this plane as a fairly capable comrade to the uh, Hunter. Now, with my friendly there, I managed to bait the Hunter, and that provides us with a 5 kill game with two lovely little, I'm going to call them assists. So ladies and gents, that is practically just my thoughts on the F4C. It is a state that is a little bit rough for the game, and of course it is not an easy fix on Gaijin's half, unless they decide to take a liking to battle running compression, decompression. Anyway, ladies and gents, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and of course, if you would like to support the channel, you can do so via the links down in the description below through PayPal, Patreon, of course, Air Models, and the affiliate link. But alternatively, just feeding the algorithm is plenty for me. Anyway, ladies and gents, thank you for watching. Take care, and I'll catch you next time.